Third, Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping attended the 19th Asian Games opening ceremony in Hangzhou. The opulence of the event inside sharply contrasted with the significantly heightened security measures outside. Not only was the main stadium subway line and public transportation completely halted, but the public security and traffic departments also imposed broad traffic restrictions around the venue. As a result, spectators had to undertake long treks to reach the venue. One Hangzhou resident remarked, quote, It shows they're overly nervous. I think we should be more confident. Social media posts by netizens described an extensive security overhaul in Hangzhou. Some local residents reported that the blockaded area surrounding the stadium was vast, with guards stationed every five meters. Residents nearby couldn't drive home starting from noon that day. One user posted a photo on social media platform X with the caption, quote, During the Asian Games, seals were placed on the windows of Hangzhou residents. The seal read, quote, Windows closed during the Asian Games. Another sarcastically commented that many homes couldn't open their windows during the Asian Games, and to ensure compliance, officials sealed windows with paper strips. Another photo revealed sealed cabinets in Hangzhou subway restrooms. Delivery services were also disrupted. A local social media user was informed that, due to the security measures of the Asian Games, their ordered pencil sharpener blade couldn't be delivered. The user sarcastically inquired, quote, How dangerous is a pencil sharpener? Can I use it to kill a foreign leader? An online merchant shared a video claiming losses of several thousand yuan due to the Asian Games in Hangzhou. They said that shipments to Zhejiang were returned daily, with over 30 items being sent back every day. Moreover, they were fined 5 yuan for each returned order, leading to significant losses. A Wuhan official, Mr. Wu, stated he paid no attention to the Asian Games. He commented, quote, Since she took office, every time there's a sports event or summit, there's a huge expenditure and intensified security. Especially if he personally attends. It's like everyone's on high alert. It's nothing new to me. The heightened security during the Hangzhou Asian Games is just a unique manifestation of the CCP's daily controls. Such disruptive and costly measures are standard in many Chinese cities, especially in Xinjiang. For instance, Xinjiang had implemented strict knife controls many years ago, a policy subsequently adopted by many other provinces in China. This July, a netizen shared a video of their experience in Xinjiang where they visited five or six hardware stores just to buy a melon-cutting knife. They finally purchased one with a QR code at a knife specialty store. Photos showed signs stating, quote, No returns or exchanges for knives. Quote, knives can only be viewed via pictures, not in person. And, quote, purchasing more than three knives requires justification at the police station. A recent video detailing the process of buying a kitchen knife in Xinjiang has gained significant attention. Present identification. Actual knives are not displayed. Customers view empty knife boxes first and then select from a catalog. After selecting, customers pay before registering their purchase and must stand 5 meters away from the knife vendor. Once the transaction is completed, the knife is handed over by the vendor directly to the customer at the store's exit. The knife, coded with the buyer's personal information, is non-refundable and non-exchangeable. <laughs> A video released last year shows that in a street food stall in Qinhuangdao, city regulators tethered vendors' knives and scissors to stands using wire. A TikTok video from May showed that even basic fruit knives and scissors in a supermarket became controlled items, displayed behind locked counters. Customers needed to specifically inquire with staff to view or buy them. In China, individuals cannot mail standard kitchen knives. One vendor stated, one online shopper stated,
In places like Jiangxi and Xi'an, during the Eurasian Economic Conference, there were knife restrictions. In Qinghai, even nail clippers are considered restricted. A netizen quote Little Mouse commented about an incident at Beijing Yuan Hospital where an elderly person's bag was searched and they were asked to remove a nail clipper. Another remarked, quote, This is a sign of Hong Kong becoming like the mainland, and the mainland becoming like Xinjiang. Another user mentioned, quote, I always wondered why people kept buying foldable knives or nail clippers when they last so long. After taking public transport frequently, I realized they were often confiscated. On September 19th, the Liaoning Provincial Public Security Bureau issued a notice ordering the province-wide collection of restricted knives. The announcement stated that citizens who voluntarily surrender these knives before November 30th might receive reduced or no penalties. Those who don't comply will face strict punishment. The notice also encouraged the public to actively report any suspicious activities or clues related to illegal knife possession or crimes. This, quote, whistleblowing culture is a hallmark strategy of the CCP. Furthermore, the directive specified that businesses producing controlled knives must complete a, quote, controlled knife production record form and register it with the police. Enterprises selling these knives must adopt a close counter sales method, monitor transactions via video, and register detailed buyer information, including names and ID numbers. Moreover, those who use knives for work must specify the usage location and ensure safe storage. They are also forbidden from lending or gifting these tools to others. A netizen sarcastically pointed out the irony in the directive. While keeping controlled knives at home is legal, bringing them to public spaces is illegal. Following the notice's directive to turn in these knives would require citizens to transport them through public spaces to the police stations, essentially, quote, encouraging illegal activities. A netizen on Jehu commented, quote, Forgive my ignorance, but according to the, quote, Public Security Administration Punishments Law, one isn't allowed to carry controlled knives in public places. However, there is no prohibition on keeping them at home. Has the Liaoning Public Security Bureau made changes to the law? On September 20th, under the name of, quote, removing firearms and explosives to protect stability and public safety, the Liaoning Public Security Bureau organized a province-wide initiative to destroy illegal firearms and explosives. The primary site for this event was set in Shenyang, Liaoning, with 13 other cities in the province hosting parallel events. During this concentrated destruction activity, a total of 3,262 illegal firearms, 500 imitation firearms, 1,939 controlled knives, and 51 crossbows were destroyed. The Dalian Municipal Public Security Bureau in Liaoning also announced that, quote, following the unified deployment of the Ministry of Public Security and the Provincial Bureau, on September 20th, they destroyed a batch of firearms and controlled knives. This indicates that Liaoning's recent actions might have been driven by directives from the Central Ministry of Public Security, aimed at, quote, maintaining stability. In reality, China's Ministry of Public Security launches annual campaigns to curb illegal firearms and explosives. However, the stringent control over knives has exceeded public expectations. Some analysts believe that this recent notification from Liaoning on knife control reflects a trend that initially emerged in Xinjiang and is now officially spread to mainland China. Indeed, the Ministry of Public Security has held a special operation this year for controlling firearms and explosives. According to their data, this initiative has uncovered around 13,000 cases related to firearm-related offenses, dismantling seven criminal organizations, raiding 258 criminal hideouts, and arresting about 14,000 suspects. The operation has confiscated 43,000 firearms, 1.1 million bullets, 25 tons of explosives, and 103,000 detonators. However, the ministry did not specify whether these firearms were real or imitation. 
In China, both are under strict regulation. Imitation guns are likely what we call toy guns or BB guns, and they're non-lethal. For instance, this year, Yangzhou confiscated 983 firearms and 11,000 bullets, of which 72 were imitation guns. Since 2022, Tianjin has seized 158 firearms, with 143 of them being imitation guns. Shanghai confiscated over 2,600 imitation firearms. A factory producing imitation guns was raided and shut down in Yichang Hebei. Although these guns are not lethal, they can be used to intimidate, which is why they're illegal in China. There have been instances where foreign tourists, after purchasing imitation guns, clips, and plastic bullets in Japan, traveled to China and were arrested for illegal possession of weapons. In China, an imitation gun is treated as a weapon. Over the past decade, the Chinese government has launched firearm control campaigns approximately every two to three years. In a groundbreaking move, Liaoning City has introduced stringent measures on the possession and sale of controlled knives. Previously, there was a blacklist of prohibited knives that citizens couldn't purchase. Now only a few specific knives are allowed and all others are prohibited for both purchase and home collection. For instance, knives used for cutting meat or fruit knives exceeding 25 centimeters, essential tools for businesses, are now subjected to real name registration, prohibiting resale or lending. The announcement further stipulated that manufacturers of these knives must complete proper documentation and registration. Retailers are required to have a fixed business location, conduct sales from an enclosed counter, maintain video surveillance during the entire transaction and record the buyer's details, including name, ID number, date and time of purchase, type of knife, quantity and item number. Private citizens are mandated to turn in these knives by November 30th, or they may face criminal charges, a minimum of 10 days detention or a fine of 500 yuan. The strict control over knives first began in Xinjiang, where even household knives required registration. They were even mandated to have QR codes and owner's ID numbers etched onto them. In case a crime was committed using the knife, the owner would bear criminal responsibility. Following the implementation in Xinjiang, a pilot scheme was initiated in Guangdong in Shanghai around 2012. However, due to its complexity, the program was not fully implemented, except during significant events. Given the announcement from Liaoning's Public Security Bureau, there is speculation if this is a pilot initiative for a potential nationwide rollout. It's an issue worth monitoring. Commentator Shi Shan believes that the current clampdown on knives correlates with the deterioration of public safety in China suggesting that the authorities might be acting preemptively based on crime predictions aided by AI technologies. He shared a personal experience where a rifle was lost during a field operation at his previously legally armed workplace. This led to a military lockdown of several villages and locals were interrogated and mistreated, although the weapon was never recovered. Many draw parallels to the Yuan dynasty when Mongol rulers, being a minority, limited Han Chinese to one kitchen knife per ten households and banned them from possessing any weapons, fearing an uprising. In essence, while guns and knives can be instruments of harm, the real issue lies in the harmony of society. If the populace is content and society is harmonious, there's a natural inclination against violence. Historically, in 221 BC, after the Qin dynasty unified the six warring states, Emperor Qin Shi Huang ordered the collection of all weapons. They were melted down in the capital, Xianyang, to create musical bells and twelve metal statues. As a result, when the Chen Sheng and Wu Guang rebellion occurred years later, they resorted to using weapons fashioned from wood and bamboo. The once mighty Qin dynasty, despite its attempts at maintaining, quote, stability, lasted only 15 years. Today, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, boasts over 2 million active duty soldiers and modern military equipment, rivaling only the United States and Russia, vastly surpassing the military might of the ancient Qin dynasty. What exactly has transpired in China?
Why is the CCP so deeply ensnared in a web of security paranoia? In recent years, platforms like Douyin and Weibo, prominent Chinese social media outlets, have been inundated with messages mocking and expressing dissatisfaction with the current regime. This dissent has grown to represent an undeniable mainstream public sentiment, mirrored in private conversations among the populace. More Chinese citizens recognize the malevolent nature of the CCP's autocratic rule, and an increasing number are growing disillusioned with it. This highlights a notable shift. The CCP's fear that the Chinese public once held for it is gradually waning. Amidst the comprehensive economic downturn and escalating social tensions, President Xi Jinping has not sought fundamental political reforms to find a viable way forward. Instead, he has chosen to consolidate power and amplify authoritarian controls, even at the expense of economic progress, further fueling public discontent. Simultaneously, infighting within the top echelons of the CCP has become increasingly fierce. Just a month after Foreign Minister Qing Gang's downfall in July this year, Defense Minister Li Shang Fu disappeared without a trace. In the decades since Xi Jinping assumed power, he has persistently purged adversaries, amassing numerous enemies, leaving the CCP's officialdom in a perpetual state of anxiety. There's a saying in ancient Chinese literature, quote, You watch them build high towers, you watch them host grand banquets, and then you watch their towers crumble. This could very well epitomize the fate of the CCP regime. Not overthrown by external forces, but much like the former Soviet Union imploding from within after reaching a critical point.